Are you getting the most out of Claude Code? I've been observing how top developers, including Anthropic's own team and the creators of Claude Code are using it and I've picked up a ton of useful tips along the way. Today, I'm kicking off a new series where I'll be sharing a few of these useful tips and best practices each week, from the basics all the way to more advanced workflows. So let's dive in. So today, we're specifically gonna go over two best practices for using Claude Code. And the first one is to spend time on Claude.md. One of the most critical factors to achieving consistent, high-quality output from Claude Code is to invest a lot of time in the Claude.md file. This is actually recommended by Claude Code's co-creator, Kat Wu, in a recent video that Anthropic put out about building with Claude Code. I think the most common ways that we've seen people customize is by investing a lot into the Claude MD file. Mm. So the Claude MD file is our um, concept of memory. Investing in Claude MD, uh, we've heard dramatically improves the, the quality of the output. So as she mentioned, the Claude.md file is essentially the memory system for your project. It's the first thing that the agent reads when it's trying to understand your project's context, rules, architecture, and development process. If you've ever used Claude code before, and even if you haven't, here's how you set up a Claude.md file in your project. You simply type forward slash in it, and it automatically creates one. But is it enough on its own to have Claude just automatically create this? I've found that it's not, and that while this is an obvious first step you have to do in a project, there's a lot more that Claude.md can do for you. And I'm gonna show you three helpful tips that help me get the most out of my Claude.md file and that makes Claude code work a lot better and utilize this file the way it is supposed to be used. So here are my three tips for using the Claude.md file to its fullest. Number one, keep it short. Number two, keep it organized. And number three, use more than one. Now I'm gonna go over each of these in detail and explain why any of this stuff actually matters in the first place and why this is helpful. So let's get into the main reason why making the Claude.md file better actually helps your project, and that is managing context. So if your Claude.md file is really large or full of a bunch of useless context, it's going to make Claude code perform slower and give you a worse output. So just for example, I put in a massive Claude.md file in this code base, and you can see Claude code actually gives you a warning that <laughs> it's going to impact performance because the file is too big. It's got 69,000 characters, which is greater than the limit they recommend, which is 40,000. And honestly, that is too many. And I'm gonna get into why that is so in just a second. But this is the main reason why you want to manage the Claude.md file. You wanna be really thoughtful about what information is in there, what rules are in there, what memories are in there, because it might seem like a good idea to put a bunch of stuff in the Claude.md file. I mean, you might be thinking, hey, this is the memory system for Claude code. Why not just just put all the memories you need in there. But if the file is overloaded and too large, the performance of Claude code really will suffer. The output, the code you're getting from it will not be very good. This is why you want to manage Claude.md file. This is why these tips will help you out. So my first tip here is to keep the Claude.md file short and specifically keep it less than 200 lines of text, preferably less than 100, and only put essential stuff in there. So what does that actually look like? Now I've toyed around with making my own Claude.md files, trying to use Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini to make them better, but there are some examples you can actually get to see what is a good Claude.md file, what's a good length, what's some good content to put in there. There's this really helpful GitHub repo I found called Awesome Claude Code, and among other things that it has, this is a, like a treasure trove of a bunch of different stuff for Claude Code. They have a collection of Claude.md files that they've pulled from other projects that can you can use as examples and inspiration for your files and your project. So check this out right here. Here's the collection of Claude.md files. You see they have a bunch of them. You can filter them by different domains, different coding languages, different scaffolding or MCP servers, whatever you need. And just look at some of the examples here. This has 25 lines of text, right? This is just very sparse, very minimal, just the basics, right? This is 45 lines of text. And again, not much more content than the previous one. You can see that the, the length is very short. These are not overloaded with a bunch of content. They're bullet points. Everything is very short and very actionable because of that context management. These Claude.md files are appended to the prompts that you give to Claude Code. So every time you're interacting with the agent in Claude Code, it's appending a Claude.md file and that uses up the context window in Claude Code. So it's very important to manage this well. But then of course that begs the question, what in the world do you put in the Claude.md file if you're going to keep it short? What content do you actually need in there? Which brings us to our second tip, which is to keep it organized. So this is a rough outline of things that I like to include, things that I've found to be very helpful to include
include in the claude.md file. And that is essential context, code standards, testing requirements, any key rules, things like for security, how your AI agents are supposed to interact with the code and any development workflow rules. So here's what that might look like in practice. This is a real claude.md file from a project I'm working on for a podcast digest app. And you can see I've got some markdown headings here for essential context. And this is actually related to a workflow that I like to use. I have another video on this that I'll link to in the show notes about how to plan your projects out and break them down into tasks. And this basically tells the agent how to do that framework and reminds it to always use that framework. Then I have a section on tech stack and architecture, which basically defines the things that we're using in the front end, the back end, the database, auth payments, etc. just so Claude knows what we're using and it doesn't change up dependencies or use different integrations that we are not using in the project. Next, we have a section on coding standards. And these are pretty basic things like keeping files small, right? We don't want really long code files. We want things 500 lines or less, ideally, split into different modules to make clean code. Um, we want some rules on how to use imports, how to use naming, any TypeScript rules or validation rules. Again, also very basic, short things, but very important things for the agent to know. We also have a section on testing requirements, uh, just some basic rules on how we want the coding agent to create tests and make tests for our code. Then we have a section here on development workflow, which just gives a very basic outline for the agent to use in its development process. The task management section, this relates to the planning and task framework I mentioned before. Security essentials, these are really basic things like don't put your API keys in source, put them in a .env file, you know, have rate limiting. And then of course, just AI assistant rules like avoiding hallucinations, confirming file paths, considering the impact of changes on the full stack, asking the user questions. All in all, these are kind of the core concepts that I like to include in my Claude.md files. But what happens if your code starts to get more complex, you start adding more components, you've got backend, frontend, authentication, you've got all these different things going on. How do you ensure that the Claude.md file stays short and stays organized? This brings us to our third tip here, which is to use more than one file. You don't have to use just one. You can actually do something that Anthropic recommends through their own best practices, and they've published this on their website too for Claude Code. You can use a master file for Claude Code, like a one in the root directory of your project, and then you can have individual Claude.md files in subdirectories. So you could have one for your authentication path. You can have one for your database path. You can have one for your front end. And each of those Claude.md files can have super specific rules. And this is how you can fit even more context into the Claude.md file, but split it out so that when you are prompting Claude, you're only using the Claude.md file that's unique to the particular portion of the project that you're working on. If you're doing something in authentication, you don't necessarily need to use the master Claude.md file. You can use the specific Claude.md file in the authentication path. So what might that look like? Here's an example, right? So you have a Claude.md file in your root directory here, or you can have even a global Claude.md file for all your projects. And then within the project itself, you can have one for backend, front end, documentation, shared context, etc. And these are just some examples. You can really do quite a lot of things with this. This is something that I've just started experimenting with, but I found it to be really helpful when the master Claude.md file gets too large to handle. This really helps split that context out. And I found that Claude performs a lot better when you do it this way than if you just have one giant Claude.md file. Our second best practice for using Claude code is to manage your permissions. Now the permissions are basically just a list of things that Claude code can do without your input. Doing this thoughtfully can help you get more out of Claude code because you won't have to constantly check in on it. It can do a lot of things that you want it to without your input. Now, if you're new to Claude code, you might be wondering, can't I just turn shift tab on? Now you can see what that does here. That turns on auto accept. And yes, that does automatically accept edits that Claude code creates. However, it does not automatically approve a bunch of different things that Claude code can do, like install dependencies or read files, write files, move files around, look at your directory structure and things like that. There are various operations that you routinely have to do in Claude code that are made a lot easier by accepting them automatically in your permissions file. Now I'll show you there are two different ways to do that. And number one, this is sort of the most time consuming way. You can sort of accept as you go. So you can see that initially when Claude code wants to run a command like npm run dev, which is to run the development server, you can just say yes by pressing one, or you can just say yes and don't ask me again, which basically adds this command to your permissions file so that you don't have to be prompted again by Claude code to run this command. And you can do this as you go in a 
your project so that over time you rack up a bunch of permissions that you have auto accepted for future use. But to make things easier, I will show you another way that you can manage permissions so that right off the bat, when you're using a new project or starting a new project, you do not have to do this except as you go approach. The permissions are all managed in a settings.local.json file, which is located inside of the .clod file of your project. Now this is where after, as I showed you in the previous screen, if you accept something like npm run dev and say, don't ask me again, it will get added to this file. Now these are the commands that I find that I don't really want Claude code to ask me every single time to get permission. Now you may feel differently if you want Claude to be more bold and be more aggressive, like more towards the YOLO mode of things, like dangerously skipping all permissions, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Or you might wanna be safer and have Claude code prompt you for almost everything. It's really up to you, but these are the permissions that I think are generally okay, at least for my purposes. Things like reading, editing files, grepping, which is basically just searching through your code base for patterns, installing dependencies, initializing a tailwind configuration file, listing files, doing web search, and these bash commands for Git, which are just basic GitHub operations that you need to do to make pull requests and push and commit code to GitHub. I've also added some things here for the Playwright MCP. I don't like to be prompted every single time this MCP server runs. Playwright is just basically a way for Claude Code to visualize some of the changes it's making in the front end and to make sure that things are actually, actually working. It can open up a browser and agentically click on things and interact with it without your input. And I find it's very helpful for it to do this on its own. Now I'm going to put this in the show notes so you can actually look at this file on GitHub and use it in your own project and tailor it for your own purposes. And there's actually a third way that you can use the permissions and that's if you create custom slash commands. Now this is something I'm going to go over in a future video in this series and I'm going to dedicate some more time to going super deep and in depth on how to do some custom slash commands. But I'll just preview this that when you make a custom slash command there are certain tools that you can allow the slash command to execute. And in this case this is a session summary slash command that I use that can sort of log the work that Claude Code is doing in a file so you can keep track of your progress. And I have allowed certain bash commands like making directory and finding and adding the date so that this slash command can run basically automatically without me having to give input. So what if you want to do Claude code in YOLO mode? You don't want it to ask you to do anything. You want it to basically have permission to do anything it wants to do, anything it needs to do. If you're going to do that, I will show you how, but there is one caveat that I will stress after I do this. Now to launch Claude code with the YOLO mode, you will type in this command right here, which is Claude hyphen hyphen dangerously skip permissions. Now this will give you a warning, okay? And you have to accept this, but if you're going to do this, just understand that it can execute any command on your computer. So so it is highly recommended that if you're going to use YOLO mode, you should use it with a dev container. And that just basically means you're running Claude code inside a Docker file. And this is kind of beyond the scope of the video. I'm not going to show you in detail how to set this up, but I'll just give you some general guidance if you're going to take this route. So Anthropic recommends that you use a development container and they actually have a GitHub repo right here that you can clone onto your project. And they give you a step-by-step -step guide here. I'm, you can do this in VS code or cursor, but you need to make sure that you have installed the remote containers extension. Now you can get this from either the VS Code or the Cursor Extensions Marketplace. You can see I already have this installed, but basically this just gives you a way to manage Docker containers and to initialize projects inside of containers so that they don't affect your local machine. They are completely sandboxed away from your local machine. Many of you will already be familiar with this. But once you install that extension, basically what you want to do to run Claude in YOLO mode is to clone the repo that I showed you here. And you can just copy this link. I'll put this down in the show notes along with the link to the Anthropic documentation I'm showing you here. Then you open the repository in VS Code. You can also do this in Cursor. But basically when you do that and open the repository, you're going to be prompted to reopen it in the container using the extension. And that will, as I mentioned, completely sandbox Claude Code from interacting with your local machine machine, it will only be able to run in YOLO mode inside of the Docker container inside of the sandbox without presenting the uh, sort of security risk that I mentioned before to interacting with files and other things you may not want it to interact with on your computer, on your laptop, whatever you're working on. All right, there you have it. This is part one in my Claude Code Essential series, so I'll be releasing new tips in part two next week. Stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoy this format I'm working with here. There is so, so much to cover with all the best practices I've learned for using Claude Code. And I wanted to break it down so I could really dive into each best practice, each tip, and also make it more digestible and easy to learn for everybody watching. So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.